a, a friend of mine who's a, uh, a scientist, his name is John Belope, and he thinks that the microtonal music has a possibility uh, to shift one's attitude or, or, or perspective on uh, how they see things. And it's, um, you know, it might happen sometime, no, who knows where it will happen, but uh, all of a sudden it, it can shift, uh, shift your perspective on how you see things. Those microtones are actually doing something, <laughs> shifting, shifting uh, brain patterns. You know, melodic wise, this doesn't lead you uh, nowhere. So um, I feel like a hamster in a wheel. You know, if you play a bebop solo like that, this just like doesn't doesn't make too much sense to me. It's just it's just to match different colors and to match different harmonies. That's that's why I needed these fingerings and that's why I wanted to to check it out. So when you have a sound wave and a sound wave hits your ear and then another sound wave hits your ear then your brain puts these two in a relation. And what the ear likes to listen to is two sound waves that are within a relation of small number, whole number ratios. So let's say the easiest would be one to one, a perfect unison, always sounds right. An octave, one to two, sounds great. A perfect fifth, two to three, sounds great, but not as yeah, like an octave. An octave is more consonant. <laughs> When I learn a new tune, I kind of, regardless of style, I kind of push the changes through a rock blues thing, a bebop thing, a chromatic thing, just to see what else I can shake loose. So I'm thinking root, quarter sharp, flat two, flat three, quarter sharp four, five, sharp flat six flat seven and then I'm just curious what kind of chords can I come up with so maybe instead of you could go answer your question about what I, what I practice I think playing the blues also what David said practicing blues and just trying to to use these notes in the in blues is like really really a cool thing Thank <laughs> you. 
just played it in two two keys. <laughs> All right, this was completely in tune. This was completely out of tune. Could you tell a difference? Slightly. I mean, this did tango because it's fretless. So it's there are different approaches. So yeah, we can we can try that. harmonies become more colors. So that's kind of a, an add 11 chord, but it's not, a, it's, it's not a natural 11. It's not a sharp 11, but right in between. Maybe you've heard this, you know, the... <laughs> um, the thing though, listen, listen. You hear, wow, that sounds out of tune, but it doesn't sound like this. There's no beating. This is actually a real 11. I mean, it makes you think of new things to play. I mean, not that I don't always try to do that, but in, without forcing it, somehow the, the chords and the sounds uh, help me uh, to respond in a different way. For instance, the last free piece we played, well, um, I have these heads on the, on the drums, so I w wanted to try and play some quarter tones on the on the pitches on the, the drums with the mallets, so you know I was endeavoring to uh, make a contribution on a percussive level, you know, from the drum perspective. I've had this microtonal class for about eight years, so that would be sixteen semesters, sixteen different drummers, various concerts, recordings. The one thing I hear from drummers is their cymbals sound different because the harmonic overtones affect it. it th so it makes them play a little different. That's what I hear mostly. And then, you know, <coughs> Jack is Jack. He's got a whole other thing going on. What I do, and what some of the other drummers that I know do, is the coloring the music, you know, being a colorist, like a painter, you know. Rather than thinking drumnistically, I'm thinking orchestrally, like an orchestra, you know, because that, that relates to our relationship to the piano. Uh, but that's percussion too. <laughs> so all that's in the same family. We all have what we have called an, an inner knowing, so an intuitive aspect that allows us to be to do what we do on a creative level. So. You really trust that. So, so you know when you play something, you're not thinking, you're feeling. I wanted to play with a microtonal keyboard, so I had to program it. So, it's, so I, I'm actually programming the 
the keyboard. It's yeah, it's it's basically really simple. You know, uh, when I started uh, using quarter tones and eighth of tones, which is forty eight tones per octave. Um, I went to New York to do my masters um, and I wanted to play with a microtonal keyboard so I had to program it so it's so I I'm actually programming the the keyboard it's it's the scale scale index so it's like I need to choose the pitches first when I start a composition and I put them program the microtonal keyboard accordingly and uh, each each each, each tune is different
All right, let's hear it for Jack DeJeanette. <laughs> Philip Gerschlauer on saxophone. Uta Artun. Drew Gress on bass. My name is David Fuszynski. You can see us tomorrow at Beantown.